him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. What do you notice about this verse? Jesus has come here as a human being. Adam lost the kingdom to Satan at the beginning in Genesis. God's idea was to have a man rule on his behalf and the man is in charge of the whole earth. But he sells out, sells out to Satan and Jesus comes and Satan says look at all this. He took him up the high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms and he says all this was delivered to me. You can only get it if you worship me. I want you to notice the words that I have put in red. Can you see the words that I put in red? Can you read them? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mountains, uh -huh. kingdoms, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where do you remember some of these words? Kingdom, power, glory. Where do you remember those words? Eh? The Lord's Prayer. Yes. Kingdom, power, glory. That's where the battle is. The battle is on the mountains. And it's the battle about nations. It is the old, old battle, but in very different, fought in very different ways. What doctor is sharing here is about the same battle. Looking at it from the Freemasonry uh, approach. If you come from another angle, it will still be the same battle. Kingdoms, power, glory. So Jesus was answering his disciples. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, and he told them you have to pray like this. Allow be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on yeah, earth yeah. as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom. The power. And the glory. This is the battle on the mountain. The that's why he took him on the high mountain. To see the whole battle. That is the battles that we are engaged in. You and I are engaged in that battle, whether we know it or not. It's about the nations. It has to do with who takes the true worship. Who is going to be worshipped in the end? Freemasonry is all about that. Whose is the king? Whose is the power? Who is the glory? They use political power. They may go by economic power. They may use uh, media. They may use arts and entertainment. Today you hear the word. Uh, people power. Uh -huh. So there, there is uh, so many roots, but the this is the same battle. The same battle. Can we say together? Kingdoms. Power. Glory. Whose is the kingdom? Whose is the power? Who is the glory? And the way to that is worship. So the devil is telling Jesus, you worship me. It's the transfer fee. The transfer fee, I have the title here. Just to worship me and I give you the nation. They were delivered to me. They are legally mine. You can only get it if you worship me. And Jesus answered, You shall worship the Lord, your God, him only shall you serve. Notice that serving follows worship. This is a very, very important principle. The one you worship is the one whom you ultimately serve with your money, with your power, with your wealth, the one you truly worship. The battle is the worship. Satan was cast out of the heaven of God's dwelling. 
the third heaven because he wanted worship. He said, I'll be like the most high. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of creation, chapter 13, verse 18. 13 and 8. Now, this is what we are dealing with. Now, the battle for nations is on the mountains. The issue is kingdom, power, glory. And where is your true worship? Because that's where everything starts. Why would people give in to a secret society? Why would they go into all this? If you notice, majority of these are affluent people. Very rich. Very powerful. You remember the power? All wealth brings glory. Fame brings glory. Uh, money, wealth brings glory. Politics brings glory. That's what they are after. After kingdom authority, after power, and many of us on one way or another, we find ourselves compromising. We compromise in our day-to-day -day life. Not knowing that when your worship is given somewhere, uh, that's where your service will also be. So where your heart is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There will your heart be also. Now, I want to bring it down to the practical issues of what we deal with in our communities. Because when, for us here in Uganda, we have 56 different tribes and we have so many different ways in which this, some of these covenants have affected us without our knowledge. Yesterday I told you where I come from. But many of us have a similar background. For us to deal with these forces, we also need to be free from all these uh, uh, covenants, all the ways in which we have uh, uh, given in to spirits, to satanic worship, ancestral worship, idolatry, and witchcraft. Okay? Now, let me go back again. God creates Adam and gave him charge over the earth. He becomes the prince of this world. Sitting on a throne with many other thrones prepared for his children. God created this universe with many thrones on different levels. But Adam was still alone and he sat on that throne as the prince of this world. But all the other thrones were already created. We are told in Colossians 1.15 that thrones are among those which were created in the spiritual realm. Adam was to sit on the apex of that throne as the prince of this world and all of us as he would be produced as he would come in he would sit on various thrones. This issue of thrones is important to connect because that's where power issue is. And that's where glory is. And that's where kingdom authority is. So when Adam rebelled, he, re he lost his position. And Satan took his throne and became the prince of this world. Took all these thrones under and he gave them to his demon or these spirits which yes, fell with him. They are now occupied by principalities. Our brother used the word principalities. These are thrones Satan gives to whoever obeys him and serves him. And these are the thrones he showed to Jesus. Do you see all these thrones? I will give you. When he come to his temptation, he gives and he's very careful who sits on this throne. Because he wants worship. Look at it, I put it pictorial. Choose one of those ones and pick it and say, that was my throne that was created for me. Because surely there was one. Pick one. Have you picked one of those? So Adam, Adam is up here. And below he created many thrones. They were for us. 
Let us make man in our image so that he may rule. When you are created for to rule, it means your throne was created for you. That was your calling. The fall didn't remove the calling. Because the callings of God are without repentance. Yes. You understand that? The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So a throne was specially created for you. That is what your calling is here on earth. So when Satan deceives Adam and he takes over and then he becomes the prince of this world, then he divides it all and gives it away. Including the one you pointed at. Do you remember what you did? Have you seen it? Now, so your calling on earth is to take back that throne. Hallelujah, that's your calling. Uh -huh. And the Bible says, they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of, and uh, they have, the, have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We are to rule, to exercise dominion to our own our here, while we are here. We are to get back the thrones, even where we are now in the different spheres of culture. So, although that happened, Jesus came, and you know what he did. He said the judgment crisis of this world is coming. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. And he cast him out of that throne with the view that he would come and occupy your throne. Now, Jesus has taken over the first one, the top one. You are to do that, to come and sit on yours. Like what we're sharing here is to enable us to ascend and get of those uh, spirits that we are talking about, off our thrones so that we can occupy it. In the various spheres, in education, in business, in politics, in uh, arts and entertainment, every sphere of culture. So tell your neighbor, you are here to rule, you make sure you get that throne back. Make sure you have to get that throne back. Okay. okay. Now. So the battle for nations is between the gods. One side is God Almighty. The other side are the gods, the spirits, Satan himself. We are involved in a battle. The battle, Satan's way of working is dark, is always secret. That's why all the things shock us when we hear, oh, even that one, oh, even that one, oh, even, <laughs> because that's how he works. Hey. Uh, <laughs> because that's the way he works. His kingdom is called the kingdom of darkness. Who knows the kingdom where we belong? It's a kingdom of what? Light. So I'll tell your neighbor, that's why you should always walk in the light. We walk in the light. God is a God of light. And him there is no darkness at all. His kingdom doesn't come in darkness. His kingdom comes in light. Now look at the way the battle is born. Fought. Uh, fought. God needs priests on earth. Satan needs priesthood on earth. The priests are the ones you see, but behind them are the gods. This has always been the principle of every warfare. Whether Buganda is fighting Bunyoro, whether the British are fighting uh, uh, the Spaniards, this has always been the concept. Even in the Bible times. So, Balak, Baraka wants to fight 
the Israelites. So he knows that he needs to get a stronger God on his side to fight the Jews, the, the Hebrews. So that's what they used to do. Between the two wars, everybody goes to their God, calls him into battle, because when your God is on your side, and if your God is stronger, you will defeat your enemy. This has always been the principle in every warfare. So God versus Baal, he needs a, a priest below. Elijah is on the side of God as God's priest. Who is on the other side? Jezebel and all the prophets of Baal. Which God will answer with fire? You see that? Where was the battle? Altar. Altar is where the battle is. Put an animal and I'll put mine. The battle is on the altars. That's where the priesthood is. Any priest without altar is only priest in name. Tell your neighbor, any priest without an altar is only priest in name. So that the, what, what, what empowers the gods are the priests and their altars. So the greater, the stronger the altar, the greater the God. The God who answers with fire will be God. And you know what happened. God versus Dagon. David is on the priesthood of God. Goliath is on the other side. Goliath comes into battle and he calls upon Dagon. And he sends a curse of Dagon on David. Because his God, if he can paralyze David, then he will defeat him. David is very wise. He knows what the scripture says. That the name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower the righteous run and they are safe. So he called upon the name of God and he was protected from the curse of Dagon. And because he called upon the name of the Lord and he was a stronger God, Goliath was defeated. So the battle is, is that's where the battle is, the priesthood. God versus the God of Cyrus, uh, of Cyprus. You remember Paul on the island of, of, of Cyprus? How he sent a, 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 a spell, spoke a curse upon that God. And the priest was paralyzed and became blind. How about Paul in, in, in uh, Ephesus? It is God against Artemis, the God of the Ephesians. The Paul is on one side, Alexander the uh, uh, Scopus Miss, the priest of Artemis, is on the other side. How about God in Egypt? It is Moses, the priest of God, against Janice and Jambres. Janice and Jambres. Have you heard of those names? They are in 2 Timothy 3.8. They were the chief priests in Egypt. Moses, they were the ones challenging Moses. The one was change worship. How many were they? Ten. That, that is what Jehovah did in Egypt to deliver Israel. He had to deal with these gods because it was their power that held Israel in bondage. The gods in Buganda, in Uganda, that are holding our wealth are the gods we have to deal with. Did you hear that? Say amen. The gods our ancestors have worshipped for years, for centuries. Ancestral worship, covenants, sacrifices, have uh, 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 put our land and our wealth in their hands. And that's what the church has to do to redeem it. Look at what happened in Egypt. For I'll pass through the land of Egypt this night and I'll smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt and execute judgment. So the battle wasn't just human. God was dealing with the gods. 
Numbers talks about it. And they departed from Ramses in the first month. On the 15th day of the fifth month. On the morning after the Passover. The children of Israel went out with an eye hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. How can slaves walk away from their masters? Because the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn which the Lord had smitten among them and upon their gods the Lord had executed them. It was the gods that God had hit. Those are ten gods the Egyptians worshipped. One is the uh, Flogo God, Frogo God, the God of the Nile, and all these. The, the, those are the names. The, every, one of, every one of those uh, plagues was targeting the God. So when God sent the, the Nile and was for all blood, he was dealing with Mukasa Wenyanja Owe Misiri. Mwuri ya wano Buganda, we have Mukasa Wenyanje, the God, uh, Mukasa, na Rubali, Rubali is God, Rubali is the, eh? so one of our major gods here in Buganda is, is Mukasa, Mukasa Wenyanje, uh, if you have not had this lake here, he was a big, the most powerful God. In Egypt is the God of the Nile. So many gods. And this, this, each of these targeted them. The frog, the, the plague of, of, of frogs was targeting Hecti. And then the last one was Ra, the god of darkness. And the son of Pharaoh was always the priest. So those, now some of you are looking at this and say, ah, what fashion, is wonderful fashion. Who fashion, anybody could design this fashion. Eh? But those are the gods of Egypt. Okay. Principalities seek to control people, families, and territories. And they are very resistant to leave territories they control. They use high places to control and dominate territories. And there are two levels. One is on the people, in the people's minds. The second one is in the high places. And it's very important to distinguish between these two. Paul talks about them when he's talking about spiritual warfare. When he's teaching about that, the stronghold in people's minds, he uses a scripture in 2 Corinthians. He says, that uh, our weapons are not canon. But they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. And he explains where they are. He says their thoughts, their beliefs, their superstitions that many people have believed and they have given Satan a stronghold. That's where strongholds are. I learned this when I, where I grew up. There was a man who lived in our village. He was uh, very big. He was called Peter Kachere. He would go four miles to drink and come back drunk. One day as he was coming back, he stood by a bush to urinate. And when he was urinating, he got a muscle pull in his private parts. Uh, and then he told people, there is a demon in that bush. Don't ever urinate there. Now one person believed it. Two, three, four. By the time we grew up, all of us feared that he, uh, that what? Uh -huh. Suppose you were the devil and 5,000 people believe that lie. What would you do? Tell me what would you do? If you were the devil and you want to come into this village and you want to dominate people, what do you do? Eh? Your altar, what do you do? Eh? Yes, you send a demon there. Come, come. So, a demon, now from that moment onward, just a demon for a few seconds. <laughs> so, you press a demon there to enforce what people believe. 
You understand that? To enforce what these many people have believed. Now the next time somebody comes, if anybody actually comes and starts to urinate here, this time it will not be a muscle pool. It will be actually this one will now come and do the same thing that people believe in. Because now they have believed it, it has enforced, it has given it power. Demons don't have power to enter and go in in communities without people's uh, permission. They need lies, superstitions, taboos, and so on and so forth. That's how they enter people individually and then communities. That's how Satan uses this stronghold. What the Freemasons are doing, they create those uh, faith beliefs or so they, it gives power to Satan in their lives and they can no longer live because now they have entered in one covenant after another. You understand that? So then the demons are on a, a community. You now need to deal with them. I'm going to deal with that at the end and then we'll pray. You can go back. Thank you for now. But you remain here for a while. Okay? Now, <laughs> you be there. Notice that one is on the thoughts level, people's minds. But the second one are the high places. How do places become high places in the first place? If this belief continues in the community of 5,000 people, who produces uh, uh, four children or eight children per family, you will have about eight times five thousand is what? Aha. So now two oh, two hundred thousand people are believing this lie. And more and more. Something that was small initially after many years it becomes a very big thing. That's why you find the stones in Mugole. Uh, which other place is uh, what? Bigobia uh, Mugenyi. Aha, which other place do you know? Which are. Nyamweha. What other one? Aha, Nakaima. What other one? Those are the high places. How did they become high places? It started like Peter Kachere. Then many people from generation to generation. So more people add more uh, superstitions, add more things. When one generation is passing it over to the children, they add. They exaggerate. By the time it gets to 8th or 10th or 20th, the thing is very, very big. Every lie they add, every lie they add, another demon. Every lie they add, another demon. Every lie they add, another demon. Every lie they add, look at the demon now. <laughs> now it has become a high place. Then very soon, somebody says, I had a dream. And the spirit on that mountain told me, I can give people Oluzalo. Conception. She dreams one of these spirits have given me power to give people the barren women. So she builds a shrine and she's referring to one of these spirits. Then another one. For you, what do you want to give people? <laughs> This one says, I also dreamt that I can give people wealth. Uh -huh. So people start to come. They come and more shrines are built. And people are worshipping and they are sacrificing. Listen, when people believe a lie and then on, on that lie they add sacrifices, they empower the demons. So what you heard about the Freemasonry is it's all about this but in a modern way. 
demons in the West are in ties and suits. Demons here are naked, uh, 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 in a back cloth, and that's the only difference. The demons in the West uh, have ties and suits as you saw them. Uh -huh. Here, when you go to a shrine, you, you take a back cloth, they will ask you for uh, a, a konkome, a lizard. Demons here are open, they are, they are really. Uh, but the other ones, they are, oh, they are in ties, they are very intellectual. Satan always, ad <laughs> Satan always adapts to the cultural context of the people he's dealing with. Yes, Satan. Yes, I want to share my kingdom with you. Akora. Aha. So he comes to your level. At your kudara. If you are intellectual, he's an intellectual. Go on, move even if you are rude. If you are crude, he's crude. But you go on, go on, over change, change. So when, when, so when people do this, if you go to a place called Walusi, have you heard of Walusi? In Ibulemezi. Ibulemezi is a, a place where so many, many, many old uh, shrines are built. It started like this. So, so many shri uh, shrines are there because people are responding to these spirits. And they are doing more sacrifices. In Uganda, we call that a chigwa. Have you heard of a chigwa? How you chigwa? One shrine is called uh, a, a, a sabo. When they are, that's the small, a kasabo. That's a family level. Huh? When you go to a clan level and on and on, then you have a kasabo, a sabo, a masabo, a chigwa. A chigwa is the diocese level. A <laughs> chigwa, this one, a masabo, is actually conary. Then, uh, <laughs> obusabo is the parish level. Parish level. Okay. Because you people are more used to the church. That's why I use church language. So you may appreciate it. Okay. A chigwa is the diocese now. Because for it, it's bigger. Now, if you come to open a church in this area, you'll have a problem. You, you, because the, the, the high places, the, these uh, Walusi and others, have affected the spirit realm. So people come in church, the moment you start to preach, people are dozing. Because these demons now have descended. Uh, you, I'm, I'm now the preacher, you are the preacher now. Uh, 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 let's get another preacher. You are the preacher. So this is the preacher of the church, and this is the congregation. Start. Yeah, to preach. Uh -huh. so the moment they start, the demons are coming in the church and they start to oppress people. And they're dozing. You come and, do, and he's preaching. You continue preaching. Come, you go. Go into the congregation. Uh -huh. Now people are dozing. And, when you get a dozing, you get a dozing. So the preacher is trying to preach. He's trying to teach. In Jesus' name. Is, and people are just sleeping. I said, five minutes into the sermon, he said, let us stand up and sing. When he says singing, Mama, they start to jank the, the king. As soon as he goes back into the world, five minutes into the sermon, people sleeping again. I said, ah, to him, let us him. Then, come on, then you start the chichiga, then you see. So the whole overnight is singing and dancing. So that, that, <laughs> you can go back. Now, this is what, you can go back with your seat. Now, this is what happens in our communities. Then you cannot break through because the truth is what sets people free. The devil doesn't want people to know the truth. He would rather have them dance the whole night. He doesn't mind them dancing. What he doesn't want them to know is the truth. For they, if they know the truth, the truth shall set them free. Yeah. So you'd rather have the church dance and dance, no problem with that. Now, okay, 
two levels. One is the stronghold in people's minds. The other one is the strongholds in the, uh, in the spirit realm, high places. High places. Okay. Now I'll jump this because of time. Let me go and end with this. Look, look at it pictorial. Uh -huh. So you look, you look at a city, but spiritually, it's dark. You can't do business, you can't succeed, everything you start is hard. I've used the church, but it's the same with business. It's the same with the school. It's the same. Anything you start is hard going. Why? These five things. Lies and superstitions. Sins and abominations. Sacrifices offered constantly. Evil covenants made by elders of the people and the people in authority. And then five curses declared or resulting from the four, the four above. Those five things empower the spirits. So you try to do business, you can't. You understand that? How, you know how you now understand how lies and superstitions empower this demon. If many people believe a lie, demons will take advantage of that. If many people sin, commit, commit terrible sins, that fuels the demons. If the people sacrifice, sacrifices release spiritual power. That's why you see during campaigns, the witch doctors are very busy. Because people believe them to get into power, they need to sacrifice. Have you seen that? That's when many children get lost, because those children are being sacrificed. You have heard that. That's what goes on during the campaign. They believe that by these sacrifices, they are releasing spiritual power. To get onto the throne of a member of parliament, they need a sacrifice to Satan. Evil covenants bind communities. Joseph Coney, Joseph Coney, why did he become that powerful? The, all the elders of Acholi came to this hill and handed the land of Acholi to him. Wow. You heard about it? Wow. They called him and there was a representative from the Anglican Church and the Roman Catholic Church, priest, and they handed the land of Acholi to him. And they sacrificed a young man called Awichi on that hill. Yeah. That, on that hill. How many of you know that? Okay, so it's a own thing. That's how Joseph Kone became so elusive. Government tried for 20 years. 20 years. So, that was a covenant we were dealing with. So it took the church to go to Awichi and destroy that altar and from that moment the power of Kone was broken. So that's how Kone was defeated. But can you imagine one man baffling government for 20 years and they could not get him. So that's how powerful covenants are until they are dealt with. Another one is Haiti. In the 1800s, the, the Haitians were under the rule of the French, who oppressed them, who oppressed them so much. They got tired. Their reasoning was, if these French are stronger than us, that means their God is stronger. So let us give more sacrifice to our voodoo gods so that we may release spiritual power and they defeat them and throw them out of their land, our land. And they did that on the public square and they chased uh, the French but at the price of covenanting Haiti to Satan for the next 200 years. That was done in 1804. In 2004, 
the church wasn't alert and they renewed the covenant. In the US, America, there was uh, a lot of persecution and, uh, and injustices done to the indigenous people by the whites who came in. And one of their chiefs, Tekumose, spoke a terrible curse. These whites had called the Indians, the Shawnee Indians, told them we are going to be at peace with you. The 20 chiefs came and they had a meal. And they poisoned all of them. And Tekumuse spoke a curse to the effect that every leader of, of, of US of, who will be elected in the year divisible by 20 will die in office. Because of the 20 chiefs they had killed. And these are the words he said. I who caused the sun to darken and red men to give up fire or water tell you Harrison will die and after him every great chief chosen every 20 years thereafter will die. And when each one dies, let everyone remember the death of our people. <laughs> Look at the effect of that for the, ne for the next 140 years. Seven presidents died in office. Harrison, Abraham Lincoln, yeah? Garfield, McKinley, well, you see them. These are the, 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 the presidents. Uh, Every year is visible by 20. All the kings, including John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was the last one. John F. Kennedy, yes, because in 1980, Derek Prince and many other leaders of the church recognized this curse. They talked to Ronald, Ronald Reagan before he took the oath of office on 20th of January, 1981. They showed him the list of his seven predecessors who had died in office. And they told him, you are the one next. He was so scared. So he said, what do we do? So they said, we are the priests. We have power to break curses, to break covenants that have been brought by all our ancestors before us. So he knelt down, they repented, and they broke that curse. Hallelujah. Now, is that not good news? But when he took the oath of office, when a curse is broken, it tries to come back. Because seven, on the 70th day, after he had been sworn in, do you know what happened? The, 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 the 20th, the, the, he was sworn in on the 20th of January. 70 days later on the 30th of March. A young, a young man called John, John, what? He was called John Henkley. Eh? John Henkley. Yes, John Henkley. John Henkley. He had a, a girlfriend. <coughs> Henkley had a girlfriend. And then it broke his heart. And he said, I must do something outstanding. He showed to the president. Just because of that. Uncle uh, was asked, How can you shoot the president? How, why, why would you kill the president? Now that's what happened. This is John F. Kennedy. I mean, this is Leonard Reagan coming out of a meeting. And out of there from nowhere, John Engle shoots and miraculously, what happened actually, the bullet went up to four millimeters before the heart. And he was rushed to King George Hospital and his life was saved. He completed his first term and even the second term and he died a natural death later on. Because a curse had been broken by the church. The church understanding the power that we have. Tell your neighbor we have so much power to destroy Freemasonry God to destroy any curse. Hallelujah.
who was elected, which is the next year after 1980, which is the next year? In this section, eh? who was the president elected in 2000? George Bush Jr. Do you remember what happened in 2001? You notice how these people died. This was 80 when he was elected and he was assassinated in 81. I mean, they attempt. So, when was George Bush elected? Uh -huh. What happened in 2001? In America? Uh -huh. 9 11. 9 11. On September 11. Four planes, two hit the Trade Center, the third hit the Pentagon. The Pentagon is not very far from the White House. The fourth plane was targeting the State House, the White House. It was intended to kill George Bush. The Americans in the fourth plane fought the terrorists, and the plane crash landed in Pennsylvania. So George Bush completed his two terms in office, without dying. So you can see the church, the power that you have to do that. Now, I want to end this way. Pictorio. This is our city, Kampala. Where there are monuments and works and altars of Satan, including the Masonic lodges, including the Hindu gods, including all these uh, foreign gods, this is what actually happens. As they offer sacrifices, spirits are empowered. When you come here to do business, it's a struggle. It's a struggle because of that canopy. So our role, therefore, as church, is to recognize how we deal with this, that we are the only people who have the key to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we pray, we pierce the satanic, the satanic canopy of a region or area to least go to work in that area. When we repent, the blood of Jesus neutralizes the power of sin, sacrifices, covenants, which strengthen those principalities and powers. So this is what happens, pictorial. When they are offering altars, these altars and sacrifices give spiritual power to Satan. Demon. The more sacrifices, the more they get power. When the church raises her priesthood, restores her prayer ministry of intercession and spiritual warfare. We start to pray to God who had turned his face away from us and starts to turn back to us. Hallelujah. And then the blood of Jesus starts to flow neutralizing these covenants and sacrifices and all the powers are broken in Jesus' name. Now this man is reigning alone. His demons are not coming. Shortly he will be coming to CNC to pray. Hey. Uh -huh. Because these things are no longer working, he said, let me go to Balokola and get saved. Hey. We are not to kill the man. No. Uh -uh. This was created in the image of God. What we deal with are the what? The forces. Okay. So, while we are in unity, as the body of Christ, we displace these principalities in heavenly places by using God's word to engage the angelic hosts on our side. Angels are sent to minister for us who are heirs of salvation. They are on our side. But they can't do anything until the church does it. The earth was given to man. Angels are not allowed to do anything until man says something. Psalms 103 verse 20 says, These angels excel in strength, but they only do God's bidding only after they have heard the voicing of God's word. Until we have voiced God's word, until we have prayed, 
They have no authority here. Demons of Satan, spirits are illegal on earth. The earth was given to man. Only man can do something on earth. That's why even God waits for us to pray until he does something. Okay, now look at it, Victoria. These are new all over, all over our city. Because of sacrifices. When we start to pray, we replace these demons with angelic hosts of heaven. Where demons have been, now now you start to have angels of God. On the sea. This is how some of these nations were. Los Angeles, for instance, was called a city of what? Angels. Because at that time, those people believed in God and called, you know, the angels were patrolling. Look at these chariots of fire. The chariots of angels. Have you heard on some villages where they say, the God of this village is the python. Have you heard of that in some? Uh -huh. Or, uh -huh. or a leopard. That here, when you walk in the evening, you will find a leopard which patrols this village. How many of you have heard that? Yeah, so over. Some of, you, some of you have not heard all of these things. Where have you been in Jerusalem? More than you know. But that's what happens in this community. This our country. Many, many villages are patrolled by leopards, patrolled by snakes, they are patrolled by pythons. That's what because of the covenants, because of the sacrifices, because of the sins. Have you had some uh, 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 island where no woman is supposed to go? You've had in the Lake Victoria. They're about to fall. No woman ever steps there. Uh -huh. no roasting of... So all these are the taboos in that area. And they keep these demonic spirits. Uh, so God wants us to release our cities so that we have these angels patrolling all over the place. Uh, when you start to do business in such a city, anything you put in will flourish. Okay? Now, lastly, after we have removed those uh, demonic and replaced it with angelic hosts, whatever you start to do starts to what? To prosper. Because you've pierced the canopy and you have released the open heaven for that place. Covenants, covenants of God do the same. God told Abraham, walk through the land. Build altars. Every altar was a, 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 like a, just as you see right there. Uh -huh. it, it releases God. Many years later, Jacob came and slept there. And when he slept, he saw angels ascending and descending. What had happened there? There was an altar. An altar which Abraham had built a long time ago. That's where angels were ascending. He says you were ascending because they were coming from down going up. And then coming. So meaning that place now had an open heaven because it had been covenanted. So you are required as a priest to covenant everything that you get into. God never gets into a lasting relationship with human beings on a permanent way without a covenant. That's why you should covenant your business. Covenant your marriage. If you don't marry the official and with a covenant, and you marry Kawundo Kaku Yedirisa, Oba Gula Kasepichi Fumbileko. Oba Gula Kasepichi Fumbileko. Those ones are not in English. So, <laughs> if you marry that kind of marriage, will God be part of that marriage? Because there is no covenant. So in the business, you likewise need covenant. In everything we got involved in, covenant your children, covenant your business, because that's really the supernatural power of God. Amina. Amina. Okay, let me jump now and then end with a prayer. I wanted to, uh, I needed to cover something, but the time has not allowed me because my time is finished. 
But allow me to, to say this finally of what our power is. We also establish our kingly authority over a city, over a nation. We influence every sphere of life. We transform communities. We transform culture. And that is the way we disciple a nation. This is our law as ecclesia. Dr. Stephen talks about ecclesia. There are two words in the Bible used about the church. One is ecclesia in Matthew 16. Another one is Epsinagog. Ecclesia talks about our authority as a governing authority of God on earth, a legislative assembly. Epsinagog is talking about when we come for fellowship. That is Hebrews 10 20. Somewhere. You know that Temulekanga Yokungana, you know that scripture. Do not Never the habit of forsake fellowship. assembling together. Huh? That is Epsinago. But when Jesus was introducing the church, he used the word ecclesia. Most of our meetings are Epsinago. We have not done good many meetings about ecclesia. Now we are coming and meeting together during this conference as ecclesia because we want to deal with something that we don't want. So we are dealing with now this meeting is ecclesia because our emphasis is to deal with the forces of darkness and to bring down the kingdom of God. Ask your neighbor, which do you mostly attend? Do you attend mostly ecclesia or a synagogue? The meetings you normally attend. Are they more of ecclesia or a synagogue? That will take how much our priesthood have degenerated. Scripture is the most quoted scripture in the New Testament. Because it summarizes Ecclesia, our authority and our responsibility. You understand that? And, and that's what I'm going to do now. We are going to stand up. Just before you stand up. I want you to see this. I put Victoria because Jesus used the PowerPoints in the form of parables. Uh, that is the way he used the PowerPoints. So that people can remember the picture and not forget. So a community. When the elder, the culture, the people in, involved in witchcraft, when they are in, the, in charge of the city, like what the Acholi elders did, they allow the forces of darkness. Then the devil is happy. They sit in the gate. The gate is a position of authority. When the priesthood is evil, it enthrones Satan. The cultural leaders, political leaders, business leaders, all those spheres, when those priests who occupy the high places, and if they give more credence to, devil, to the devil, it is where we come in as the church. Jesus says, I'll build my church. Do you see the church of God as the army of God? He said, when they come and they are advancing, these gates of hell shall not prevail against them. They will be able to break through those gates. They will march in. They will remove the devil. And they will possess the gates. And then they come and occupy the gates with my word. Okay, let's stand up now. I want us to say some of these scriptures together. My testimony. I overcome Satan when I testify personally to what the blood of Jesus does in my life. I, the redeemed of the Lord, say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed. Through the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. Through the blood of Jesus, I am washed. Through the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed. Through the blood of Jesus, I'm declared not guilty. Through the blood of Jesus, I'm acquitted. Through the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified and set apart for God. Through the blood of Jesus, I am and have peace with God. 
through the blood of Jesus. Speak settled by the blood of Jesus. Okay? Now, this is, this is the kind of uh, not yet done. Okay? Now we will still read together. This is the prayer. After you've applied the blood, then you start to use the word of God. Because angels wait for the declaration of God. They excel in strength, but they only respond to the voicing of God's word. Okay, let's go on. Lord, Lord deposit your militancy into your snow, your fire, your church of heaven, your broom of destruction, your breath, your shouts, your east wind, over the works of the enemy in our Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, Congo, and Africa in the name of Jesus. Now, there are two ways to destroy the strongholds. If many people believe, if you use the altar, when you do that, you are speaking a curse to an altar. How many are you ready to do that? Uh -huh. So when we say, whoa, aren't you? These are all scriptures. Are you ready? Tell your neighbor, give me first. Give me first. Uh -huh. okay. Are you ready? 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 Huh? Have you applied the blood already? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, now one, two, three, go. Whoa! And you set on all us. Whoa! For the day of the Lord is at hand. As destruction from Almighty and sufficient comes upon witchcraft and satanic altars freemasonry in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Africa. Lord, Lord, you Lord, have Lord, opened Lord, your armory and host. You have worked to do in the land of Uganda, Uganda Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Africa. Lord, send you to confusion, satanic, <coughs> and evil priesthood. Make all of them turn them back and run. Send your honest before us. And drive them out of Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Africa. By driving them out of Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Africa, you contend with them all over. Remove them with your blast. As in the name of the East Wind, Lord! Cause your glorious voice to be heard and the descending glory of your arm to be seen. Come down with indignation and anger and with flames of a consuming and devouring fire. Amid thunderstorm and hailstorm, that your eyes, O Lord, witchcraft and the freemen of us will be stricken with this man and terror. When you smite them with your rod, their fire pit has been made deep and wide with abundance of fire and wood. With your breath, O Lord, like a stream of fire, set them ablaze. Hallelujah. Send out your arrows and scatter them and shoot out lightning and defeat them. Our Lord, come and do not keep silent. Let your fire be well before you and let it be very tempestuous. Round about the wicked altars of witchcraft, idolatry, and freemasonry. Let the stream all come with fire and with your chariots like a whirlwind to render your anger with the fury and rebuke with the flames of fire. By fire and by your sword, speak with all the wicked, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Ha <laughs> ha. How do you like that? Eh? The last one. Lord, Lord, rise up again as witchcraft and famous altars. Cut off from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Africa. 
all the remnants of sorcery and indigenation. Lord, make this old a possession of the hedgehog and porcupine and of marshes and pools of water and sip with the broom of destruction. Again, and sip with the broom of destruction. Again, and sip with the broom of destruction. You have sown saying, surely as I have sowed and planned, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Don't stop, declare, declare, yes, 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 don't stop, come on, yes, raise your voice, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 hallelujah, yes, yes, get down, get down, come on, yes, oh, Rabashe. about, if you remember that picture of a Masonic Lodge with um, props, scaffolding, holding it in place, like it was about to fall off, but it was being held up. For me, that was a confirmation that that word that I had heard was really for about this conference. was saying that he had a dream, and in this dream, it was a very big structure, a very big edifice, a big structure, and it was being held up by those Scaffolding. Those, you know when people are building a house, there are those poles or scaffolding that keeps it in place. Um, he knew in the dream that that scaffolding was keeping that building. But he also knew that that structure was keeping many people in bondage. Many, many people. And then he saw a small store, someone, a David, with a small stone, with a, a smooth stone. And he threw that stone at that huge building. And, and he heard the sound of it ricochet, like it was, you know, he could hear the echo. And as he saw the dream, he said, what can this small stone do to this big building, this big structure? But amazingly, when the stone hit the structure, the scaffolding began to fall off. And the building came crashing down, collapsing, until it was completely destroyed. And when it came down, there was great rejoicing. Because people who had been controlled by that tower, that structure, had been released. And when I heard that word, I said, that's our word. That's the word for this conference. That's the word for this, this time. And that's the word for Africa. Now, every here on this stage we have, and we, we knew it was important that we had agreement. What Bishop has been talking about is about agreement that, that the church is supposed to agree on things, that when we sit as a church, when we agree, it's like we are legislating, we're passing laws, we're passing spiritual laws over our nation. And so it was important that we had agreement, not just in the church in Uganda, but the church in, the, in, in Africa, in the region. 
And so we're able to invite some pastors from the region. And here on the stage we have some pastors from those nations that uh, a bishop has been, we've been declaring. We want this day to be a day of consecration. Amen? We want this day to be a day of consecration of not just the church. The enemy's uh, function against us has been to divide, always. To divide and conquer, separate. Because he knows the power of, of unity. So today as we're standing on the stage, we're going to just pray, we're going to repent. As the church in, in Africa, the church in East Africa, the church in this region. Because we are the ones who have that ability, that, 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 the, the keys to unlock our nations. Amen? And we're going to ask the Lord that, that freedom, freedom is going to reign. That these, these divisions that keep people in their small congregations, in their small... When the church of Jesus Christ is one, the, church of the, the body of Christ is not divided. And it's only when the church really unites. That it can be that church that, that they are talking about, the ecclesia. So I'm just going to ask us, we're going to kneel down here. We have one king. If you are not able, to, if there is some condition that stops you from kneeling, it's okay. And I'm going to ask even everybody here on the, in front of us to kneel down. Father, today we set aside this as an altar before you now. We raise this altar of our priesthood to kneel down before you to repent, to acknowledge our sin, acknowledge our pride that has kept us disunited and has kept us from doing your will. We want to admit, Lord our God, that we've been selfish, we've been proud, we've been self-centered, building our own kingdoms rather than your kingdom. We want to ask, Lord our God, for mercy and for grace. We are holding our hands together, Lord, as a sign, as a symbol of our accepting to work together. As the body of Christ across this East African Federation, Lord, to start working as your church, forgive us, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon our strife, our competitions, our jealousies, speaking against one another, preaching against one another, talking against one another. Forgive our sins. We acknowledge our sins. We acknowledge our pride. Partisanship. Yes, bringing partisan spirits in your church. Lord, I'm in this camp, I'm the other camp. I'm this denomination, I'm the other denomination. Forgive us, Lord. Give us a new beginning here as we together come together to fight, to defeat, to subdue this spirit of Freemasonry and many others, Lord our God, which you have already defeated on the cross of Jesus. But because we have not allowed your cross to work in us, many of these enemies are at large. So we admit, Lord, that we your priests, we your leaders, we your shepherds, Lord, have divided your sheep. Forgive us. Have mercy upon us, wash us by the blood of Jesus, cleanse us, and make us ready to work the army to defeat and subdue the enemy. Who is already defeated? The enemy who is already defeated at the cross. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Notre Dieu et notre Père, le Père de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, c'est toi qui es Dieu. Tu as dit dans ta parole, le ciel est ton trône et la terre est ton marchepied. Tu as donné la terre au Fils de l'homme. C'est à l'homme que tu as donné la terre. Et cette terre a été vendue à cause du péché. Et nous, en tant qu'Église, nous nous agenouillons devant toi pour nous repentir de tout le péché que nous avons commis, des divisions, de la haine, des manques d'unité, 
même l'occultisme, la sorcellerie, les mensonges, et entrer dans le vice, l'adultère, l'immoralité, et entrer dans l'église. Père, nous venons nous repentir de toutes ces choses qui ont brisé le cœur et l'unité de ton église. En tant que corps, nous sommes ecclésia, que tu as racheté, non pas par l'or et l'argent, mais par le sang de Jésus. Par le sang de Jésus, nous avons été rachetés. Père, merci de nous pardonner, de nous laver, de nous purifier. Père, des pratiques ancestrales, d'animisme. Père, dont nous avons imité l'Occident dans le matérialisme, dans l'animisme et dans l'humanisme. Père, nous prions que tu nous, tu nous viennes en aide au travers de ton esprit de nous guérir, de guérir nos relations, de guérir nos cœurs et de, de briser tout ce qui fait que l'autel des ténèbres soit placé dans l'Église et dans nos nations. Nous te demandons pardon. Pardon, Père Céleste, parce que tu es un Dieu qui pardonne et toutes les nations viendront à toi. Nous sommes venus à toi, toutes les nations, pour demander pardon. De, ici en Ouganda, la Tanzanie, le Burundi, même le pays limitrophe qui nous entoure, le Rwanda. Père, nous te demandons pardon. Le Congo démocratique, même le Congo république, même l'Angola, même le pays qui nous entoure, même mon Dieu, l'Ouganda, l'Éthiopie. Père éternel, nous te demandons pardon. Burundi et Kenya, nous te demandons pardon. Les autres pays, même du nord ou du sud, nous te demandons pardon. Pardonne-nous, Père Céleste, au nom de Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur. Who was baptized in the Holy Spirit and brought the faith into Africa? We're going to give the. I believe that Ethiopia was supposed to be that beacon. Ethiopia is the only country that was never colonized. But instead of, of the spirit, the church in Ethiopia became a religious church and spread the spirit of religion. In Instead of the spirit of, 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 of life and freedom and liberty that's in Christ Jesus. It is the oldest church in, in Africa. It is the first place that the gospel went outside of Jerusalem. I want, us to, I want you to repent, our brother, on behalf of the church in Ethiopia. And we want to ask the Lord that the spirit of religion should be pulled down. In Africa, in Ethiopia, and in the world. We want to ask that the Lord will release this church to be what it was supposed to be, intended to be. Amen. Hallelujah. I just I pray in my language. Praise the Lord. Allah. Chakanant amlako pe Jesus um silt anzar in disappearance aliyalan his bin exiabero with a kafitan tamata exiaber his bin book at the nabat well but sit an mangasaran the tick on aliyalan yet an a subas tarochin nagal gauchin naviatin exiabero but a lot highly like exiaber pe Jesus um silt an is safe and not exiaber highly like the tas in a sat aliyalan exiaber is Africa has been tabarak. Xavier Celezi, Bonet in a select Alkidan, Covenant, Churches, Xavier and Dinagana, and in Samaya, we cover in Dinag and Celeratan and Namas Sagan Island, Xavier Sloan de Moche, Celezi, Seraluanda, Burundi, Congo, Xavier African is a Bafit of Oman Alena, Xavier Christina, the set in the tone by Yasu Summit Ali Allen, the set and machine by Yasu Summit Yifras, Hululanta Kaburihun, by Yasu Summit Amen. Father, today we want to declare into the spirit realm, we want to declare from ages past and present and future as a church that is in this land today. Father, we do not want to serve 
any nation and any kings on this earth. We don't want to serve China. We don't want to serve England. We don't want to serve France. We don't want to serve America. We don't want to serve Portugal. We don't want to serve Spain. We don't want to serve Belgium. We don't want to serve Islam. And the lie that the enemy has told is that Christianity and faith is, is, is a religion of, do, of domination, of colonialism. And that if you embrace Jesus, you're embracing domination, you're, you're embracing the, 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 the faith of, of the religion of people who dominated you. Father, we reject that in this place as null and, and, and counterfeit. We receive the truth in the name of Jesus today. That Africa, that our faith and, our, and our, the, 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 the gospel came to Africa first before it went anywhere else in the world. And the gospel and, and faith is at home in Africa. And that Jesus, you came and took refuge in Africa. And that the children of Israel came and, 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 and fled from famine and stayed in Africa and prospered and were blessed in Africa. That the man who carried the cross of Jesus was an African. That the people who laid hands and sent out the first missionaries with Paul were African. 